Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of installation videos from Cars Gadget. In today's video we're gonna install our most popular model. It's a smart video interface with Android Auto, CarPlay, MirrorLink, rear view camera, front view camera, all in one unit. In today's video we're gonna install it on Audi Q5 with concert radio. This installation will apply to any Audi A4 Q5 2009 through 2017 BA or B8.5 generation with concert or symphony radios. If you don't know which radio do you have, it's actually easy to identify. Just visit our website and we have a nice chart showing all Audi radios models so you can easily see which radio you have in your car. And now let's begin the installation. Turn the ignition on without engine running, apply emergency parking brake and select gear shifter into drive position. Turn off the ignition. It is highly recommended that you disconnect negative terminal from the battery in the trunk area when you work around electronics and especially airbags. To protect the trim, cover it with a towel or painter's tape. Using provided orange trim removal tool, remove climate control panel. Then disconnect two connectors from the panel. First pull up two red pins and then unclip the connectors. With the help of a trim tool, remove air vents. The wire for the air vents regulator stays connected. Just loosen it a bit and put the air vent on the steering wheel column. Now let's remove four 8mm bolts from the radio. Go ahead and remove the radio. I found radio edges are very sharp, so I decided to protect steering wheel with painter's tape, just in case to be safe. Unplug all connectors from the radio. Here you have a better view of what you need to disconnect. You have four connectors to unplug. Don't be mistaken with the installation of our regular backup camera interface. For the installation of smart video interface, you don't need to remove LCD or connect LVDS cable to LCD screen. Leave it as is. With smart video interface, we'll be connecting LVDS cable to the back of the radio. Now let's install FPC board on the radio for the button controls. The provided FPC board will be daisy chain and installed on the front of the radio. With the Phillips screwdriver, undo two Phillips screw on the front of the radio. We will reuse them later, they will be holding provided FPC board. Using your nail or flat screwdriver, peel off the sticker covering a chrome plate. Using a pick tool or a flat screwdriver, remove chrome plate. Right behind the chrome plate, you'll find the white ribbon that will be daisy chaining with our FPC board. Very gently, with the pick tool of flat screwdriver, wiggle it out from the motherboard. Now let's connect provided white ribbon into FPC board. Pay close attention which direction I'm connecting white ribbon to the FPC board. First, you need to pull out two black stoppers on the white connectors at the FPC board. Make sure you inserted the white ribbon all the way in where the blue line parallel with the board and then lock the black lever. Now let's connect provided white ribbon into the radio's motherboard. I found it easier if you make a L shape, like sort of bend it, the ribbon, but bend it in a light way so you don't break it. And then with two fingers, wiggle it in into the connector, same way as you wiggle it out. Same thing, your blue line will be your guideline, make sure it's parallel to the motherboard and the ribbon inserted as far as possible. Be very, very gentle. Now let's connect OEM ribbon into provided FPC board. Same thing, unlock black lever first, 
gently inserted the ribbon into the board and locked the connector. Using two original screws, attach FPC board to the front of the radio. Now let's go ahead and remove glove box. To remove a glove box, you need to unscrew 10 8mm bolts. One on the side covered by the plastic piece. These are two bolts underneath the glove box. Five bolts inside the glove box at the top. One at the deep right corner and one is located behind IMI unit that needs to be removed with a special tool. But don't worry, we get you covered. We provide you the radio removal tool for Audi. So now that you know where all the bolts located, let's go ahead and undo them and remove the glove box. Once you unscrew all bolts, just let the glove box rest on the floor. On this car, the screw behind IMI unit was missing. Looks like someone already removed glove box before, but I'm just showing you the location of the screw behind the IMI unit. Now let's proceed with provided microphone installation. The kit for concert and symphony radio requires installation of the second microphone. Remove T20 screw in the sunglasses compartment. Then grab dome light console and pull out from the headliner. This is a location of original microphone and will be installed in provided microphone right next to it. Take provided microphone, put it face down to the mesh and attach it with a zip tie or electrical tape to existing wire. This is how it's gonna look like after the installation of the provided microphone. If you look from the bottom, the microphone will be facing to this mesh. Now let's run microphone extension cable along the headliner. On the A-pillar trim, with the orange tool, remove plastic cover with the letters airbag. Do not remove A-pillar trim completely, just pop it a little bit so you have a room to run the wire underneath the airbag. Do not run the cable on top of the airbag, it's not safe. Once you run the cable underneath the airbag, run the cable along the door seal to the bottom of the dashboard. Then reinstall a pillar trim. Now let's start connecting all cables. Take provided LVDS cable and fish green connector to the glove compartment area. Grab provided main harness and let it line up so all the wires in proper place. We need to run a small cable to the lower portion where the climate control is. And then the longest end with the white connector, run it through the back slot to the glove compartment area. Then prepare USB AV cable. For now, at the glove box area, you should have USB cable, LVDS cable and white connector from main harness. At the radio compartment, from the main harness, connect provided female connector with OEM male connector. Now grab provided LVDS cable and connect OEM LVDS connector with provided female connector on LVDS cable. Make sure all connections are snugged and secured. Now let's run microphone cable from glove box compartment to the radio compartment through the same opening where you ran other wires and connect it to the blue wire at the main harness. Connect provided quad lock connector to the radio. Connect provided LVDS cable male connector to the radio as well as the rest antennas cables.
So the radio go back without any problem. Push the big connector to the right upper corner. Once the radio placed back in place, you can reinstall four bolts on the radio. My bad in this video, I forgot to film how I ran the small wire for the FPC board. But basically what you need to do is to run this cable from USB AV cable along with the microphone cable from glow box compartment to the radio compartment and then connect it to the FPC board. This white connector has small dots like a guiding slots so make sure those guiding dots facing towards you not towards the radio otherwise the connector can fit both way and if you push it and install it wrong way you won't have a control over the carplay interface also another tip about this small cable for the apc board make sure you have enough slack so when you install climate control panel back in place it won't push on the wire and will disconnect it from the connector it happened to me uh, again i didn't have a control over the interface unit i removed the climate control and find out that the cable was disconnected i reconnect it make it enough room for the wire play it around install the panel and it worked now let's connect provided CAN bus cable with OEM mail connector from climate control unit then tackle access a wire underneath the radio then connect provided CAN bus cable connector to the climate control panel and the last OEM connector reinstall climate control panel back in place as well as the air vents. Don't forget to reconnect power wire to the air vents. Here I'm showing the ideal place for the antenna. Just place it from the other side, peel the sticky tape and attach it to the plastic surface. Do not attach it to any metal parts. Now let's connect all cables to the interface unit. Install LVDAS cable, a power cable with CAN bus cable, connect AV cable, attach the antenna, and make sure you have your DAP switcher set up. At AV cable you'll find red and yellow wire. Yellow wire is a power wire for the rear view camera and the red wire is for the front view camera as well as the RCA connectors for the front and rear view cameras. If your car already has OEM backup camera, you can stop right here and assemble everything and you're good to go. But in this video, we'll be installing rear view camera. So go ahead and connect rear view camera RCA into yellow RCA in at interface unit and the red wire from the RCA connect with the yellow wire, which labeled 12 volt reverse camera out. If you also would like to install front view camera, watch our other video on YouTube on how to install front view camera on Audi. Once all connectors are connected to the interface unit, you can zip tie the interface box to the upper rail in the upper left corner and reinstall the glove box. Now let's run rear view camera RCA cable from front to rear. Tackle the cable behind the carpet underneath the glove box, following the plastic trim along the doors. Once you get to the rear door, you need to lift plastic door seal and fish the cable to the outer side. Then run the cable up along the rubber seal. Now let's remove some plastic trim in the trunk area. Remove the back hook. You will need to undo Torx screw under seat release handle. Undo the screws behind the hook and the release lever. Then you'll be able to pull up a side panel a little bit. Don't remove it completely, just pop it up so you have room to work behind it. Now we need to fish RCA cable from the outside to the trunk area. Using a long zip tie or a wire fishing cable, run the cable under the plastic trim to the trunk area.
Now using the same technique, we need to fish our RCA cable to the lift gate hinge area. Now let's go ahead and remove tailgate panel. Undo four Torx 20 screws, two on the sides and two on the middle. Grab the panel on one side and pull firmly straight down. Then follow the edges and clip all clips. Disconnect light connector. Then unclip halfway side panel. Unclip hinge cover. Using a small zip ties, start organizing RCA cable. Just attach it to the existing harness. For our application, we don't need to use these black and red wires, so just cut them and isolate them with electrical tape. You can do it even earlier, so it will be easier for you to run the wire from the front to back. Now let's replace OEM trunk handle with provided trunk handle with the camera. You have to undo four 10 mil nuts from the metal bracket. Remove the bracket completely and you no longer need it. You can keep it as a souvenir. There is a plastic clip on each side of the handle. You need to press it with the screwdriver in order to push out the trunk handle outside. The trunk handle with the camera we provide is a complete OEM retrofit of B9 trunk handle, a new style without metal bolts. It's holding on clips. Here is how it looks after the installation. Reconnect power plug for the push button, make sure it inserted all the way until you hear a click and it locked properly. One more thing to note about these two small wires, some people think they cut it accidentally and connect them. No, just leave them as is, they must be cut it, they cut it for purpose. Complete dressing all wires. And reinstall all panels back in place. And you all done. On the radio under media menu, select external audio source. Make sure that you insert it provided AMI cable in the glove box. To enter the multimedia interface, press and hold media button for 3 seconds. For the first time, you'll be greeted with the Cars Gadget logo. To pair your phone with the system, for the first time, connect it with the USB cable. And then follow the prompts. A grip to everything and activate wireless connection. After that, you can disconnect your phone from the cable and use wireless connection in the future. Your phone will connect automatically each time you get into the car. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel, as the next video will show you how to fully operate the system. For now, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you at the next one.